Recently, I have been getting this question from many of my clients. What should I look out for when buying a resale condo? Well, buying a resale property is definitely not as straightforward as buying a brand new unit from the developer as there is no such thing as the defect liability period and there are a lot more potential pitfalls if you are not familiar with the process. Hence, I've compiled the 5 key factors that you need to know before committing to a purchase. Number 1. First impression counts. From the time you pass through the security guard as a resident going through the resident lane, will we be blocked by the backlog of cars trying to enter the visitor lane? When you enter the car park, does it lead you directly to the lift lobby or do you have to park in a multi-storey car park and walk a distance back home? What is the general upkeep of the development? Are there lots of wear and tear in the building facade? Are the facilities properly maintained? Of course, it is also good to check what is the maintenance fees you are expected to contribute. Number two, there tend to be a few different layouts even for the same unit type. For example, does the unit come with an additional utility slash storeroom? Can all the rooms fit at least a queen size bed? Are there any odd shapes or dead space which can't be fully utilized? Do the bathrooms come with a window for natural ventilation? And etc. etc. In addition, you also need to be mindful of the facing of the unit. Will there be direct afternoon sun? Will there be future construction coming up in the master plan which might block a view? Is it too close to the opposite block? Not only will these considerations affect your day-to-day -day life, but they will also affect your resellability and selling price in the future. Number three, it is important to take note that properties in Singapore are sold on an as is where is basis. This means that the property is sold in its current condition, whatever this condition happens to be. From the flooring to the ceiling to water leakages or pest issues, the onus is on you to do the necessary due diligence. Here are two things that I'll usually do to protect the interests of my buyers. Firstly, I'll try to negotiate for a second inspection of the property. This will make it less likely that the seller will allow the condition to deteriorate too much from the first time review to the second inspection. Next, I will obtain photo evidence of the property's current state and condition during the inspection. In the event of any disputes, we can always refer back to the photos. Number four, pricing is definitely one of the most important factors. I'll usually equip my buyers with the latest transactions including specific information on the unit number, floor area and transacted price so they know they are not overpaying. Also, before making the final offer, I'll check with the banker on the indicative valuation so that my buyers will avoid incurring cash overvaluation. Finally, after you are satisfied with the condition and pricing of the unit, it is time to put in an offer. Now, in order to make sure your interests are further protected, it is important to formalize all the terms of your offer in this document called the Offer to Purchase. It will include key details such as the option period, completion period, option fee, exercise fee, request for second inspection, and other conditions you might have. This means that the seller has to accept these terms together with your offer price. Of course, there are still many other considerations to take note before making this huge commitment. To give yourself a peace of mind, it is always safer to engage a trusted professional to walk you through the entire process, most of the time with no additional cost. So, if you are planning to purchase a property in the near future, feel free to reach out to me via the various platforms.